dias 14, 15 e 16 de julho de 2014, aconteceu em Fortaleza a sexta cúpula dos chefes de Estado dos BRICS. Nessa oportunidade foi adotada a declaração e o plano de ação de Fortaleza e, mais importante, foi criado o novo Banco de Desenvolvimento dos BRICS. Num outro lugar, distante do centro de convenções onde aconteceu a cúpula, aconteceram também os diálogos das sociedades civis sobre desenvolvimento. Chamados pelas organizações brasileiras, esses diálogos contaram com a participação de pessoas do mundo inteiro. Como parte do projeto Poderes Emergentes, Sexualidade e Direitos Humanos, o Observatório de Sexualidade Política documentou os diálogos e entrevistou ativistas, pesquisadores e pesquisadoras uh, sobre a sua visão do fenômeno dos BRICS. E, mais importante, exploramos como as questões de gênero, sexualidade e direitos humanos se situam nesses debates. Em parceria com a Fábrica de Imagens, produzimos oito vídeos que agora apresentamos a vocês com muito prazer. Why did you travel so long to come from China, from Beijing to Fortaleza to be here? For World Cup? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I only catch up the the last, the, and I see only the trash, you know, all over the beach. <laughs> I'm here to attend a CSO forum um, on the um, on the BRICS summit, uh, which is the first I think first time they organize a women's women's forum, mm -hmm. um, you know, inside this uh, uh, the BRICS CSO dialogues. I think it's important uh, to build a connection with the civil societies in the other BRICS countries. Because, you know, while the government of the BRICS, you know, has been always meeting, you know, at very high level, on, you know, political level, uh, well, the civil society, especially, I think, Chinese civil, society, civil societies, hasn't been very active engaging in this space. Um, it's not only because of, it's not because that we're not interested. I think the reason is because of, uh, um, Lack of maybe the awareness about the importance of the engagement with the civil societies in the space, you know, of the, the BRICS. Yeah, I think um, in China, the BRICS was a hot topic. Um, it's sometimes, you know, it's um, on the, you know, front page or, you know, make the headline at news. Um, but who is talking about BRICS? mainly from the government because you know when you're the member of the very prestigious club mm -hmm. <laughs> have only limited number of members mm -hmm. that you feel you know that's more mm -hmm. important uh, and also because of the you know rising increasing influence increasing you know the you know the um, so actually china give uh, chinese media give a lot of attention to the BRICS it's in the recent years um, apart from the interest of the government on the BRICS, there was uh, also a lot of uh, uh, attention from the academia, which doing research on the you know the the, the BRICS, the, you know, the the future of the BRICS, you know the policies and you know the, the foreign policies is only government mm -hmm. you know it's it's nothing to do so with the civil something that the state does so yeah the this, yes, civil, do but well, you have nothing to do with this you know it's it's far beyond mm. we can reach you know like we we're not really concerned about that because we don't think that was something you know, relevant to our work yeah we because we're concerned about you know community provision of the services or you know maybe you know policy change in the country level or the provincial level, but then, you know, foreign policy, like we're not really looking at that. For example, the research on the BRICS is only coming from the institutionalized, you know, the the and uh, the think tank that you know affiliated with the universities or the you know uh, the Academy of Social Sciences. But now civil society also involved, you know, they are also doing the research um, on the you know those policies. So I think that's uh, that's something that. I think uh, Chinese civil society's interest has in been increased in the past few years. If you look at the 
you know, its uh, initial motivation of the creation of the BRICS mm. is about, you know, finance, it's economic concern, not so much for political, because if you compare the BRICS to to UN, of course UN have more weight than the BRICS, you know, in terms of the political influence, right? Mm. Uh, and if you look at also the agenda of the BRICS, you know, since its beginning, it's, it's, uh, um, it's focusing on the economic uh, and finance. In regards of the, you know, the BRICS performance or behavior, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, very, it's very interesting. I, I have to say that uh, if I can, you know, put the, you know, the the level on the good guy, bad guy, yeah, uh, <laughs> and okay yeah, guy yeah. <laughs> in the in the in negotiation room. Uh, of course, there was a very diverse, it was very different, you know, from each other on this on those issues that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. For example, um, South Africa has uh, you know played the leading role to supporting gender equality, sexual reproductive health and rights, and especially related to the you know. Um, the rights of uh, an LGBT that's on the mm. issue of you know social identity and gender identity and um, the social orienta sexual orientation, the gender identity, which Russia was strongly against, mm -hmm. and um, and Brazil also you know quite quite supportive and you know champion those issues, mm. and uh, there's all, there's the India and China is up in between, you know there sometimes there's silence. Uh, mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember they were very, you know, openly, vocal. yeah, the, the vocal, vocally support those issues, but they're okay. They would let it go, but Russia was always, you know, opposed. So far, I think South Africa and Brazil has been quite consistent, you know, consistent. Um, but I would say in the very, polit you know, complicated um, political mm -hmm. and geopolitics, uh, that's uh, Brazil and uh, South Africa sometimes you know they don't want to be mm, how to say that you know like isolated mm. by the so from, from their the region country. yeah from the, region. from the regions yeah because they're you know like BRICS is just one identity like we know that everyone mm. has a multiple identity they are also every country yeah, has a multiple identity yes and, yeah so yeah, they have they're very complex actually is adding more you know layers of the compli complicate complicities to to their position in those negotiations for example um, South Africa they maybe have to lower a little bit of their voice in you know supporting those agenda that's considered as you know controversial or contentious um, and because they don't want to be isolated by the African group actually there was a exclusion of the sexual rights is worrying because it was not only about, you know, the sex, sexuality. Orientation. Yeah, it's it's about you know everybody's mm -hmm. health, it's everybody's bodily integrity. You know, there's a, the basic human rights is it's very important component of basic human rights that's been left out. So I, I think that's uh, something we should continue to work. Yeah, and to to push. In China, we. We had the socialist legacy, you know, we, when we are still under, you know, this leading party, this communist party. Um, but we see, apart from the, you know, the, the, the Christian, you know, religious uh, group, now we also see there was the rising of the, you know, from our so-called traditional, you know, Confucianism, you know, the, the, the Confucianism, Confucianism Buddhism. Uh, not so much Buddhist, but, you know, Confucianism. Um, the fundamentalist, you know, discourse, like for example, like the emphasis on the family, um, and you can see from the negotiation process, China is always supportive of the language that proposed by the conservative countries on the family, the family. and they co-sponsor the you know resolution that proposed by. <laughs> On Russia and Egypt on the protection of family in, in the human the rights. rights council. Yeah, they in human sponsor. rights council, they co-sponsor and uh, they yeah. So that's something actually worries uh, many of the uh, women's rights advocates and women's rights workers in China, and uh, because of the, this it seems like, you know, this, this, the women's 
it's become a state policy on the women, you know, on the family and also the way that they talking about in the family and the women's role in the family was very, you know, problematic because it was a, it was actually not in line with our constitution and not also not reflect what is the reality in our society, which women actually play very active role in the all you know aspects of the social mm -hmm. life. You know, in the, we have very high rate of the okay, women's uh, participation in the labor forces, and so when, and now it's a we when we talk about the family policy, you know, we have to define what that what that mean. In that sense, it's interesting that the BRICS that the BRICS document here mm. has not mentioned at all mm. the question of the family, mm. at least. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign, huh? Yeah. Yeah, the absence. We yeah, absence. The yeah. absence. Yeah, of. because now some conservative countries, states, they're trying to push the family at the standalone goal. Yeah. Of course, we successfully kick them out, you know, this, yeah. But uh, if they were included, they would be very... It, it will be, you know, formulated in a very negative way, I, I suppose. Yeah. So it's better not to see, see it in this document. <laughs> Thank you, Yiping. Huh?